Okay, well I'm going to bring a few more diagrams here for you guys to have a look at. So this will be another Divine Nature and Mankind series. And I'm going to decode all of this information to the students in the group at that level. And if you are just joining us and you haven't informed yourself of the information previously to seeing this video, I suggest you go and check out the playlists that are on the channel wall. And then you'll have an understanding for what is about to be discussed. And so in this video, I'm going to just bring some diagrams about the ether, the ethereal, the soul, and try and speak a little bit more about the side of humankind and mankind, basically, that has been removed and taken from us because it seemed that a small group of people with a darker agenda and a lust for power and domination took control of mankind and basically stole the whole ethereal and spiritual side of mankind and then created a story that is only one of physicality. And because we are in a time of physicality in this cycle we're in, the 26,000 year cycle, we do easily fall into that belief that we are physicality. And we even have technology that is very physical because there is no ether to work the um, skills and abilities of mankind which is where they have access to them when the ethereal environment has returned and so this diagram here i'll go through the painting after i've read this passage here from jung and now even though jung talks about a collective consciousness i think he just needed to move it down into the car consciousness where we actually have an instinctive consciousness and individually, we all have a separate bar consciousness that's located at our third eye. But just think that instinctively we are all connected and we do react on that level to our environment. And we are all of the same tree, basically. And so we can interact on that level, on that intuitive car level. And, you know, students who have looked at the information before know about the bar and the car and the car being when you can sense your environment through your external um, physical attributes like you know the hairs on your arm will stand up and you'll be sensing that environment that's coming from your car from your solar plexus that's why it's the gut feeling because it really is another um, network of neurons down there working to take information from your soul and then relay it physically into the physical environment because you have to understand that everything comes from the ethereal outwards and so the physicality is that we exist in when we are manifest material materially is always reacting to our soul and not the other way around and so basically that's what we're doing when we're sensing the environment. It is our soul intuitively using our physical um, capabilities to assess the situation on that level, on that gut level, and then sends that to your mind to be processed. And then also your heart works in this because your feelings of whether this is a good idea or not and... Um, that works in with your gut as well. I mean, this is how your neurons work. And they have finding that in the heart and in the gut too. So it's not like it's not there. Science has discovered it. It's just they don't understand why is it there. Well, it's working in with your soul. I mean, we're an organism. We're a light being organism that's been manifest materially into a biological environment and on terra firma. We basically are an avatar of terra firma in a physical um, body. But first and foremost, we are souls. We are created as souls. We are of the creator as souls. We are in our environment 
as souls, even mankind, not just the divine race who are more in their environment when they're in the ether. I mean, this is, you know, their absolute environment where they were created into, but even mortals in the ether have access to their skills that they don't in physicality because they too are in an environment where they should be and we all should be in the ether. But because we have to have always a sunset and a sunrise, this is why the universe works in a yin-yang polarity to keep a rhythm and just always a continuous one going through both polarities at different degrees on the way there which is why I like to see the number eight um, infinity symbol that way and then in the middle when the infinity's meeting in the middle is when we're back at zero point and we're re-merging with source to start a new cycle once again which is what we keep doing so this is the cycle of man on an ethereal level that's just been hidden and it's all tied in with the 26,000 year procession because basically the physical is attached to the calendar year that we use, the solar return, but the ethereal is the galactic year. It's different. And so what happens is mankind just forgets that we have an ethereal year, but there is help in us forgetting. And this is what we have to understand. And so this is why we can only just try and keep putting the pieces back together because... <laughs> Unless someone wants to go down to the Vatican and knock on the door and say, hey, we want our stuff back. Uh, we're just going to have to do what we can and just use what we can to piece it back together. And so the first stop along the way of understanding ourselves is understanding we are ethereal. First and foremost, we are ethereal. And if we are doing the right thing and existing for creation, we are immortal. And if you are divine, then you are immortal too. But even just if you're mortal and you are just here for the abundance of creation and you really are in your heart because that can be weighed, then you are eternal. And just like the universe is eternal. And so we just exist in incarnations of the physical that are just through these destined paths that our creator uses terra firma as the stage for his experience. That's why the saying, all the world is a stage. It's not only in physicality when it's their stage, but also it's God's stage. So that's the first thing people really have to understand too, is you have to humble yourself to the understanding that you are part of a a basic creation of a larger consciousness and even though you have free will to take your paths you still will take all of those paths back to your creator and there will be certain paths that you'll have to take that are fated that you can't avoid and so when you understand that, then you can start to use that information to empower you because you understand that everyone does have paths available to them that does make their experience down here when they're incarnated easier than if you're not going to listen to your soul and use your skills and abilities to make your way through your experience. And you are just going to allow your mental to override everything and be then trapped into the illusions created by others and this is why scripture is left with all of the warning about that because mankind are weak of the flesh that is our achilles heel we are easy to lead because by nature we're indulgent and lazy and when someone's providing us something that we think makes our time easy it seems like a good deal and however at the time it seems easy but there's always a price to pay and this is what mankind's about to find out with the antichrist unleashing and so this is why it's good to know about this information that you're ethereal because you want to know that when you're going to be faced with some very challenging situations because the physical is collapsing around us and 
basically to understand that better and journey through this time easier knowing that you're a soul just experiencing this time in the cycle definitely makes it something that's bearable and easier and that you can even help others with so that's why I continue to do this and just so I have people that I can talk to because when you spend your time just looking at this type of information and really getting these understandings for how creation works and how we are all part of this there aren't many people that are really looking at this they are unfortunately mesmerized by this easy path that's been presented to them by the Antichrist and as I've said before Antichrist is anyone that's against the light within you it wants to extinguish your light and that is what they want to do everything they do is against us big pharma GMO everything they poison us they poison the oceans plastic everywhere Fukushima leaking everywhere leaking they don't care and we are at their mercy at the moment so only when you start understanding the truth that you are a soul and that's what they've got over mankind this understanding that we're a soul and it's accountable and we are accountable for our actions they just have mankind thinking they're physical and you just have to wonder if there's a god but when you actually go and do look into the occult sciences and go and do all of the seeking and investigation you find out it's true there is a creator and so these people just yeah are not wanting to see the truth of how creation manifests itself and they get stuck in this easy path they think because it's all just about what they can attain through money and that's all that really counts and then you just hope that you're following the right you know belief system and when it all goes that you um, are where you wanted to really be so anyway that's pretty much why yeah I keep bringing out this information just so that I can discuss this more and um, you know have people start getting this understanding for themselves more so you can have more of an in-depth conversation with people except about who got evicted from Big Brother or some other trivial bullshit you know so let's continue okay before I keep rambling on and uh, that's what I'll pretty much do in these videos too is just find a point of discussion that I want to bring you and then just allow that information to re be relayed however it basically comes out because um, I'm not quite sure which rabbit hole I'll take and I could just end up back to where I've started so excuse me if I do that too but it's all about tangenting off sometime and you do that because you get lost in thought of putting other connections together you think of it like almost a neuron and uh, you're making new synapses and so you're reaching out for others and there are multiple ones that you can choose from so you can go down many paths to find the truth you don't have to go down the one path but there is only one truth and it's just a way of getting to it and so fortunately with the artifacts artifact from the Louvre those numbers have given us something of a core understanding so that we can understand the science and know that it is something that can be dependent on because it always keeps confirming itself so what did Jung say now as I said with Jung my only thing with Jung is that the consciousness is the car consciousness and yes we work on that level and then I really like a lot of the stuff that Jung has spoken about and this in particular this parable is really 
a great way he has explained the ethereal side of man. And so he goes on to say, it is through the soul's imagination that we can increase our capacity to know the divine. This is our spiritual growth. This is the process of learning the archetypal language of the soul. This is not a static language. It is not an alphabet or symbol system. It is the language of the heart, a language of imagination. The imagination allows us to envision, to open the mind so that we can explore and discover the soul's archetypal world. The imagination takes us beyond vain identifications and routine symbolic representations into the depths, into the unknown within. And it is there that we encounter a divine landscape. While current religious believers often seek God's wisdom outside themselves, visionaries and mystics know that God speaks to the soul. The divine communion with the soul is experienced through dreams and visions. Jung says, the believer should not boggle at the fact that there are somnia uh, de missa, dreams sent by God, and illuminations of the soul which cannot be traced back to any external causes. But the vast majority do not turn inward to find God. They seek God in their heavens above, in the church, in their religious leaders, even gurus and mountaintops, but not within the soul. And it reminds me of the Gospel of Thomas. If you look to the sky, the birds will precede you. If you look to the ocean, the fish will precede you. God is not there. God is in you. And this is where we understand the soul, because we are part of God. This is the spirit that we have to account for in the causal, three causal planes, the conscious, the spirit, and the physical. And so we have to account for the ka and the, the, that spirit. And this is where we're all part of and part of the creator. This is how the creator has his connection with us through the spirit, through the Holy Spirit. And then we start seeing all of the archetypal symbol with the dove. And this is, you know, um, a great way to see who we are as souls. And this is the archetypal symbol for the divine male and female. And we can see that the divine male's also got aspects of Hermes because he's the first emanation from Hermes. So they can share that symbolism. And she works through Hermes because she's translating everything that is coming through the Ark of the Covenant, the receptor. And then somehow it works that Bina decodes this. And this is why we see the rule and the measure in the Freemasons because they know that it is both intellects that have to unravel divine knowledge. It's not just given to one gender. It has to be the two genders working together in the tribe to access the knowledge, because the tribe actually becomes the brain for the creator, but it's split physically and consciously but by the car and their ethereal heart, they're still joined. For mortals, it's different because they're not created as tribes. Only the divine race are created as tribes, 144 tribes. However, the bronze tribes are different because they are an emanation from the gold and silver tribes. They are created of a ter uh, terra firma uh, manifestation but spiritually of God whereas the um, gold and silver tribes are spiritually and physically created and seeded onto terra firma foundation as direct from God and so with mortals there is a twinning process with each soul but it is not a guarantee that they will go through into the next cycle because if one doesn't pass judgment, then one will go through without the other soul. However, this is where this arranged marriage comes in, where they've stolen the symbolism and made it into this horrible, disgusting, negative thing. And it used to just be, because all marriage represents is the 
um, illumination at the end of the cycle and rejoining the source. And as you're going through intermediate consciousness, that's basically the bridal chamber, or they call it the Hall of Mad. It's very um, varied sometimes, um, the Halls of Judgment, all these dip It's got lots of processes, intermediate consciousness, so you can have quite a few symbols attached to it. And so basically, this is also what happens. They're rejoining as one soul to go back to Creator, once again to rejoin. And so that's what marriage is and then the governments come along and made it physical because we're in a physical part of the cycle and they're our gods now and so that's why they are the third party in marriage but in true traditional marriage archetypal symbol who we are learning this information from the very beginning marriages with your twin soul your soul and god and so even though you mightn't be a tribe, you'll still have another soul that is um, created at the same time. However, if that other soul in your mortal doesn't go through into the next cycle, you will be arranged with your soul, with a, comp you know, a, a soul that complements you in harm because the creator is God. I mean, who better to, you know know who is for you than your creator and so it's not this negative thing they've turned it into it's just this is how it works this is how nature works but the divine tribes will always come back together and then re-emerge and then you know start the new cycle and begin again it's just the mortals really have to work hard to find each other through to the end of the cycle but the way it looks with all of the destined paths is that you are always going to be crossing paths with people in your soul tribe through every incarnation. And this is how the Egyptians knew how to direct their souls, and they did. They even left information about it. And this is because at the beginning of the cycle you can. You have that ability. And you are returned back into your soul family so it's not like the doors are not there to mortal for mortals to find their twin soul it's just that if it happens it really is a fairy tale because you know a lot of incarnations to go through and karma and yeah so i'm very impressed for anyone that can do that that's immortal and I suppose the ones that do probably become part of the elect um, because you know as we've seen that there is an elect within the mortals 10,000 so there's 144 mortals that 100 sorry 144,000 mortals that come through into the next cycle and 10,000 of them are the elect so the ones that have come through together would be rewarded consciousness knows you know, this can be weighed and measured and this is what happens at the beginning of the cycle too. So this is why I think you have saints because I'm looking at the saints and the apostles and there is a difference there. They're making a difference and a determination between the, dif you know, the, the ranks. So this is not because one's better than the other and studied more Bibles. It's because of where they are positioned closest to source or not. That's what it is because that's true royalty, okay? That's true nobility. You can't buy that crown at what position you were created. And so those that are created um, closer to source um, have the crowns by birthright and then the other ones that um, are not created so close to source but do actually stay true to creation and creator are also rewarded by creation based on their achievements basically this is why you see the hall of maya and the judgment hall and there's such a big ritual of going through the judgment hall because from what the ancient egyptians say everyone has to actually account for all of their actions incarnations and from my understanding it does look like even the divine race will have to face 
judgment for their journeys. And this is basically what happens. They do journey off and then they come back in on the ether again. And they will have to account for what they've done. And I suppose that will weigh on them if they would not have passed judgment if they were mortal, but they did go through in the position of someone that may have missed out because there's only 144,000 in weight that can come through. That's all the ark will carry. I don't carry any more. So I suppose that's where the humbling comes in when they realise that. And I suppose that's also where the fall, fallen angel symbolism comes in as well. And so that's what people have to understand with divine man is, and divine woman is just another conscious um, soul having an experience. And so they also will make choices that are of a good path to follow and of not such a good path to follow. The problem is, is that the programming has been that all of the divine race, you know, which they've brought down to saviours, are these godly saints and never do wrong and, you know, this unattainable um, image. And it's just not true because the creator wants a proper experience. The creator needs for the divine race to go to sleep and wake up again the way they do so that they can experience this awakening. And this is how creation works on an ethereal level. Where, yeah, it just spends a time buried in the physical, buried deep down in the physical. And then it resurfaces again and it even says everything buried will be raised. The anchor comes back up. You know? Well, I will leave it there. I think that's a good lot of information to come out about the ethereal. I did have some other diagrams, but I'll just keep going on. And as I said, you know, I'll just, as much as I can attribute to a diagram, I'll just continue to bring the information. And I will bring the other information about the ether in the next video because it is more looking at some diagrams by flood and understanding the cycle of the ether and applying that to other symbols. So I'll show that in the next video. And for now, I'll leave this here. And as always, peace out.